What's going on guys? Paul here from KC Fly Company. Um, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on my DOA real fast. I'm going to do the Sexy Shad, which is what I've got a finished one of in the vise right now. Um, yeah, just kind of a bait fishy profile. Um, has a little bit of a jig. I put a small lead eye in there, but I really don't want a big jigging action. The lead eye is just to help keel everything and just a subtle jig with a belly roll to the fly. Um, I do this in Fire Tiger's bluegill patterns. Uh, obviously the sexy shad. And yeah, we'll go ahead and tie one up. So the hook that I'm going to do, this is the 6 inch. I'm going to use a 2 watt Arex Predator Stinger. And my thread, I just use 210 Danville Power Thread. Okay, so first step is we're going to tie in a clump of bucktail from the tip of the bucktail just because I don't want to flare this. This is more just to set my tail and keep it from fouling. Take a loose wrap over it, capture it, and tighten it down. And then I'm going to close down the loop on the buck, or not the loop. I'm going to close down that bucktail a little bit with just real loose thread wraps. And then I'm going to come in with some SF blend. This one's white. Capture that. And I have that going maybe an inch past the tips of my bucktail. Proportionally it's probably 30-70, 30% going back. And then I work that up the shank just to kind of keep my markings. And tie it back. Come in and run your scissors down that. Trim it a little bit with taper. Okay. So now for the first station of flash. There's three stations of flash that will add up into a decent sized flash tail. Um, I'm using the Hedron Mirage Flashaboo. And kind of silver and opal. And I pre tapered all my flashaboo so it's not a solid clump in the water. Okay. Now we're going to tie in some craft fur in white to finish off the tail. We're almost finished off the tail. Okay. Another section of flash. This time I'm using four pieces of the Mirage Flashaboo and two pieces of Pearl Dyed Chartreuse Flashaboo. my thumbnail to it to spread it across the back. Okay, so on the 6 inch version of the DOA, I have changed it a little bit. Um, originally I did it with body tubing right here to help flare and give me a shoulder and I've omitted that and just gone with a hollow tie on my bucktail through this section. Um, on the 4 aught the 8 inch version, I do still have the body tubing in there just to really beef out the head and give it a lot of lateral movement. Um, I just don't think 
you really need it on the 6 inch version. It makes the head look a little too big. So measure that back. And then I'm just enveloping that bucktail around the shank of my hook. Took two loose thread wraps and now I cinched it. Clean up the butts. And this bucktail that I'm hollow tying is meant to be a support for the rest of my craft fur wing and also my marabou collar. Okay, got the taper that we want. Obviously I leave it pretty open so you still get a real full look out of the head of this fly. Um, once you add the craft fur and the marabou to it, it does slim it down a little bit. So now we're going to take gray craft fur, which I ran out actually. So this is white that I colored with a gray Copic marker. And reverse tie that. make a bullet with your craft fur there. I really like doing that with craft fur because you get a nice envelope across the entire top of your fly and can make a lot of really cool color combos with it. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite materials to use is craft fur, especially mixed with bucktail. It just seems to work out really well. It looks really good in the water. Um, and yeah, it's cheap tie a bunch of flies with it. So one more section of flash. So that's all of the flashaboo for the fly. As you can see it adds up to a pretty decent flash tail. Um, now I am going to come in and actually put on my dumbbell eyes before I do my collar just so I don't have too much or crowd the eye too much. when you're using your dumbbell eyes, those wraps below your hook shank in between the dumbbell eyes, what really locks those in and keeps them from rolling on you when you're fishing. Eventually they will roll. Um, I usually do hit these with a drop of glue. some in by the eye there. Okay, so now we're going to do a palmered marabou collar with one gray feather and one white feather. Um, anytime I palmer marabou, tie it in at the base and palmer it from the tip. I just think it looks a lot cleaner and it definitely doesn't take up quite as much room. Plus you get full use of every marabou fiber. Um, it's all going to move independently in the water um, and it just looks really good. Now I wrap back over it a little bit. Okay, now we're ready for our rubber legs. 
I do four on each side. So I just take a clump of four and I leave them all attached on the ends. And tie it on top of the hook at first. And just pull each set of four to the sides. Make sure I got them where I want them. Okay. And now for the head. Um, I've used all different kinds of dubbings for this. When I first came up with the fly, I was using Bruiser Blend a lot. Um, I've gone to Laser Dub just because it's what I have readily available at the fly shop. So we're going to do gray on top and bottom. And then I'm going to come back through and color it with some markers to get that blue and real dark gray back as well as my orange throat. Okay, so now I'm ready to whip finish. Pull all my dubbing back, whip it off. I usually do two three turn whip finishes. Okay, come out the head. Okay, so I'm going to come in and separate my dubbing on the bottom from my wing and my collar. Take a sharp angle with my scissors and trim all that out. Come in and soften up the front of it a little bit, round it out. Make sure you don't have any dubbing over the eyes. And then on the top, I just make very small cuts right here at the very front just to round that off a little easier. And I really like trimming the laser dub. It holds its shape really well in the water when you trim it. And it just looks looks good overall. Okay, so now we're going to do the orange throat. Um, I use a mix of markers. This one's a Panatone. On the top I'm probably going to use a mix of Copic and Panatone. Uh, I really like these Panatone markers. They're just hard to find. The ones I've got, I lucked into. My buddy Jared gave me some. Okay, just blend that back with your finger. Alright. So there's the orange throat. Now I'm going to come in with a Neutral gray is the color, Copic marker. And you go over all the dubbing on the top of the fly. And blend it back. And by doing the whole dubbing head and blending it back through my marabou, I'm darkening up the back of the marabou a little bit. 
just so I get that uniform color transition throughout the fly. Okay. And usually every time I'm doing these heads where I color the whole thing, always comb through it. Try not to catch your rubber legs in your comb. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with, this is called Agate. It's kind of a steel blue. And on the sexy shad, I make a little diamond shape, kind of tapering it back thinner and thinner as I head back toward my collar with the blue. That way you still get some gray showing on the top of your fly. And I'll go back through and comb that. And one more color. I'm going to run a stripe of black straight down the top. And now, starting at the eye, you make three bars. Obviously, you don't have to bar it. Um, I just do for my own sake. I just think it helps make the color pattern look a little bit better. And voila. That is the Sexy Shad DOA. Um, I will come in and trim those rubber legs. Yeah, I throw this fly at bass, smallmouth, or largemouth, smallmouth, um, pike, trout, pretty much everything. Um, anything that you have a little bit of depth, that way you can allow that fly to jig and kind of belly wobble and deflect from side to side. Um, yeah. The bluegill one tears it up on largemouth. This one works on pretty much everything. And the fire tiger as well works on pretty much everything. So check them out, kcflyco.com. Um, have a good one.